We're going to uh, talk about this uh, example puzzle. This is a puzzle that I wrote called Again. This example puzzle was written by me to illustrate some of the most common motifs that you might see in a mystery hunt puzzle. Now you can immediately see that this puzzle has the three sections we've mentioned. First, we've got the title up there on the top, Again. And we have the flavor text, which is one line underneath it in italics, Investigate Simultaneity in Septets. Uh, as Todd mentioned, there might be some hints in there. We'll see as we work through this puzzle. And now we come to the puzzle content. Uh, we first notice that this puzzle has a bunch of crossword-like clues, but each one ends with a letter in parentheses. Then there's a horizontal line break, and then three sets of blanks, and, uh, and then each one of these blanks also ends in a um, blank in parentheses. So we're not quite sure what to make of any of this yet, but... Uh, the, we know how to solve crossword-like clues, so we could do some searching on the web for it. Uh, yes, and that's worth mentioning. For Mystery Hunt, you are allowed to search for information online or on Google. That is not considered cheating. And in fact, many puzzles, the designers will expect them to be impossible to solve without some form of web searching or another. Now, when you encounter a puzzle like this, if you're working alone, you could print it out and work it on paper, or if you're in the same room with someone, you could do that too. Or you can work on it by staring on the screen and chatting with someone about it. We'll have a later presentation talking about some technology you can use to it. But this one happens to be all text, so we're, we can easily copy paste into a shared spreadsheet, which is how our team likes uh, working together on puzzles when we're separated, like so. So we uh, go to another spreadsheet and uh, paste, the, paste it in. And now having this be in a shared spreadsheet is going to make it easier for team members at different locations to collaborate. So let's try this. I'm going to take the cells that are right after these clues. I'm going to go ahead and highlight them in yellow. And then I'm going to go ahead and share the link to this spreadsheet. Uh, if uh, someone could type it into the Zoom chat, please, while I also uh, put out the uh, big URL over on the sheet. So go ahead. Uh, anyone who's out there, try to go ahead and solve this, solve the, at least solve the clues and try to put the answer to each clue in that yellow cell that I've put there. I know some of you out there are smart and might end up solving the whole puzzle. So I'd like to ask that you only put answers in the yellow cells and not disturb the rest of the spreadsheet. If you do think you see some patterns that might be useful for later steps of the puzzle, just hold off on mentioning them until we get there. And I can see that we've got a lot of uh, answers filled in already. Uh, we've got one, two, we've got about 10 answers in out of uh, 23, that, so that's pretty good. Uh, I see that uh, some people have uh, typed their answers in in all caps. Uh, some people have changed other answers to be in all caps. Uh, some people, somebody's already changed the typeface for the column to be in courier font, which is useful for some things. Um, Wait, well, it's been pointed out that the words are alphabetized, the answer words. Ah, yes, that is a very good observation. We will, uh, we will mention this, I'll mention this later in the presentation. Um, it looks like we're getting there. Okay, we have about four or five spaces left. Okay, uh, should we wait for the last few to come in? How are you guys feeling? There's that looks like there's a uh, there's some question marks, but that's okay. Go ahead and leave the question marks there if we're not sure. Um, that Italian car answer is uh, having a hard time falling. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna keep. You can keep on guessing, but at this point, just so that we can get back to the presentation, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, copy these answers to the uh, other to to another spreadsheet that you guys can't edit so that uh, we won't be distracted by this. All right, there we go. Okay, and uh, so note that on this spreadsheet, I've actually added a few things here. I've added a header section of three rows uh, with the title and the flavor text in the top two rows. And I've also added a little header row that explains what the columns for the spreadsheets are. Now, when you solve puzzles, you won't always need them, but experienced solvers know that they're, they'll be helpful because there's often some hints 
in, in those early lines. And having your columns be organized is also very useful. All right, so we've got some clues solved. So it's clear we're pretty far away from having the single word or short phrase that's the answer to this puzzle. So maybe we could hunt for a hidden message somewhere that tells us what to do next. Now, one of the simplest way to hide a message is in what we call initialisms. That's when you read the first, when you have a list, you read the first letter of each item in the list. So here we could go ahead and read the first letter of each clue and we get S, maybe the digit two, maybe the letter M, J, S, B, I, T, F, okay. So that's, that's garbage. That's probably not a message and probably not useful. Okay. So how about looking at the flavor text? Ooh, investigate simultaneity in septets. The first letters of that say ISIS -S, or ISIS. So believe it or not, this actually is a secret message to tell you, hint to you what to do next. It is not a reference to an Islamic terrorist organization. It's not a uh, Egyptian goddess. It's a puzzle hunter's acronym for the uh, for the type for a type of puzzle called identify sort index solve. Now, if you can only remember one motif for this presentation, make it this one because many many mystery hunt puzzles will use this motif or a variant of it. We're going to go through these steps in a bit more detail, but in short summary, it's just like it's on the slide. Identify means you're looking for patterns. Sort means you're reordering your data. Index is the most common way to extract a message and solve refers to understanding that message. So let's go back to our sheet. And we're going to do the first step, which is identify. Now for this puzzle, all the correct clue answers have something in common. Now, uh, if you see what it is, go ahead and post it in the chat. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a monospace font. Todd? They have noticed have double letters has been the comment by several people. Ah, yes. Okay, yes, has anyone noticed the double letters are good? We'll come back to that later. Uh, anyone else noticed anything else? It, it, it's much more obvious in a monospaced font. Seven letters each. That's right. It sure seems like a lot of these answers are seven letters. So that's probably not a coincidence. So let's go ahead and put that in our little notes. Um, and note that the flavor text up here uh, confirms this. It uses the word septets. So that sort of helps you know a little bit that you're on the right track. Um, although sometimes in a real puzzle, you might be on the right track and not have that little confirmation. So it's sometimes there for to help you and sometimes you may not get that help. So that does mean though that the answers that we have that aren't seven letters are probably wrong. So probably not Holy Thursday, for example. So um, so these, we don't have a seven letter answer. So let's go ahead and replace them with question marks for now. And we've got a few other ones that we uh, don't have the answers for. So let's do that. Now, uh, another pro tip, the experienced teams that are playing for speed, usually they don't solve all the clues before moving on to the next step. As you've noticed that it, some of these are a little bit obscure and may take a while to search. And often you don't necessarily need all the partial answers to necessarily get the final answer. Uh, I say that if you're, if, you're, if you're enjoying the process of finding, looking, doing all this research, looking stuff up, if that's fun, you should go ahead and take your time. It, it, it can be a very satisfying to see all the clues filled in. Just like when you're solving a crossword puzzle, it's much more satisfying if you have the whole grid filled in as opposed to maybe you only fill in a third of the grid and you say, oh, I know the answer to the crossword now, let's go. Um, but for, for this example, let's move ahead for now without them all filled. So they all have seven letters, and uh, but that doesn't actually, still doesn't quite get us to an answer. It doesn't give us the next step. Um, and if, so we can, somebody noticed, probably by the initialism trick, that the first letters were all the first these words all seem to be in alphabetical order they this they go a a a b b f f g h that's not really a uh, message but what does that mean knowing that we should at least be able to pinpoint the range of the missing words we have so for example we know this 
word between buzzers and fuckers is B, between B and F. And we know this word between now what and pious XII is between N and P. Wait, wow, that's been solved in chat. Oh, Henry. Okay, sure. I'll go ahead and type that in. Oh, Henry. And someone has mentioned triduum for 24. Triduum. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so. Cherry QQ. <laughs> we're going to put that in? All we right. We got to complete. That in. We have it complete. All right. C H R Y, right? Cherry QQ. There we go. Okay. So. We're, this is going to lead us to the uh, second step of ISIS, which is sort. And this is another motif of puzzle design, which is whenever you encounter a list of items that is sorted in a really obvious way, usually alphabetical order, that's the most obvious way to sort things, just like our clue answers here, then it's a hint that you need to find a different order for the list. Sometimes you won't get the hint that this hint of things being in alphabetical order or in some order, but a good puzzle designer will usually make sure that it's in there. So we need to find a sort key. So there's some letters and parentheses here that we haven't used, maybe those. So we'll go ahead and write that down in a different column in the sheet. There, I've done so. And let's go ahead and sort the clues by these letters. Okay. And the first letters of the clue, now the, the, they're sorted A, 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 B, 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 C, D, C. And the first letter of the clues is uh, two bad words. Okay, that's still junk. And the first letters of the clue answers are abs. All right. So, and come to think of it, since we only have the letters A through G, that's a lot of duplicates. So there's no clean way to figure out how they should be sorted. So it, this probably isn't quite the right sort, right sort key. So, um, do we have any other ideas? Uh, anyone, any guesses in the? It has chat? been mentioned in chat. Someone suggested to sort by the double letters. Ah, the doubled letters. Yes. So we have the word simultaneity in here, and that helps us confirm that yes, the doubled letters is a great idea. So let's go ahead and make a column for our doubled letters. Okay. And uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, type in what some of our doubled letters are. So R, Z, M, F, V, M, T, L, L, J, X, U, O, E, I, oops, I, and Q, Q, Freddy's, Happily, Assange, Scuttle, Wiggins, Bockers, uh, Y, oh, they said it was gonna be a family, family friendly presentation. It really is a type of plane. Um, <clears throat> okay, and now let's go ahead and sort by these doubled letters. And let's go back and see if there's initial messages, F, W, D, L, not so great, F, G, H, W, also not so great. So I'm, I'm starting to think that probably we've already used the initialism trick for that initial ISIS hint. And um, so we're probably not gonna be using initialism. Wait, well, one point I would like to commend Carlos for suggesting whenever sorting a spreadsheet, it's often good to have the original order captured in case you need to unsort. That Just a little is, pro tip that Carlos pointed out. Thank you, Carlos. Yes, that is a great tip. I didn't use it for this example because uh, uh, it is a pro tip, but there's also the undo, there's also the undo ability in spreadsheets. And yes, in our left out private spreadsheet, template, we actually, our first column is always in numbers, just starting at one and reading down so that we can always get our original order back. So that's a great tip, Carlos. Okay, so it's 